Foreign Minister Wade Malim continues his meetings in New York discussing bilateral relations with foreign ministers of Togo and Lebanon. And Al Mu'allim discusses with Al Ibrahimi ways and means of supporting his mission in Syria. The Syrian Arab Armed Forces continue their operations in Aleppo. Gangs of Al Saud and Al Khalifa continue their repressive campaigns in Al Bahrain and Al Qatif. And the youth of Homs work together to clean the streets from traces of terror. Good afternoon. This just in. A terrorist detonated the car he was driving in the western part of Al Qamishli city. The incident led to four deaths and injuries in early estimates, in addition to large material damages. Foreign and expatriate Minister Walid Al met in New York with Foreign Minister of Togo Elliot Ohaini, whose country occupies the non permanent seat at the UN Security Council. Al Mu'allim presented a review of the situation in Syria. Mr. Elliot pledged to convey the facts about the situation to his leadership. Mr. Al Mu'allim also reviewed the fraternal relations between Syria and Lebanon with his Lebanese counterpart, Adnan Mansour. The two ministers also reviewed the latest developments on the Arab and international arenas, especially the UN envoy Al Akhdar al Ibrahimi's mission. The Foreign Minister also held a meeting with the UN envoy Al Akhdar al Ibrahimi and discussed with him means of making his mission a success. Al Mu'allim affirmed that the success of Al Ibrahimi's mission basically depends on halting the support, training, and funding of armed terrorist groups. Another meeting was held between Mr. Al Mu'allim and Jeffrey Feltman, the Assistant UN Secretary General for Political Affairs. Al Mu'allim briefed Feltman on the systematic targeting of public and private properties and the infrastructure by the armed terrorist groups. He affirmed that the economic sanctions imposed by the U.S. and the United and the European Union affect the Syrian people's living. The two sides agreed to continue consultations and coordination. In Homs, a terrorist group committed a massacre against the people of Al Haidariya in Al Aqsar countryside. They killed 17 people and kidnapped an unknown number of victims. The terrorists attacked the village at dawn today, firing mortar shells and machine guns. They also carried out acts of looting in the village. The Syrian Arab Armed Forces continued their operations in Aleppo and its countryside against terrorist groups, inflicting heavy casualties among them. A unit of our armed forces killed a number of terrorists near the Sport Institute and destroyed a vehicle carrying six machine guns in Bustan al Basha. Another unit killed many terrorists near Al Zarzur Hospital in the Sukkari area, while another unit inflicted heavy casualties among terrorists near a mosque in of Al Hamza and Jamal in Kalasa in Sheikh Suleiman area in the Aleppo countryside, a number of terrorists were killed and wounded when our armed forces chased them. Another unit of our armed forces attacked a group of terrorists in Dalat Azza in Aleppo countryside, destroying two vehicles carrying machine guns. In Damascus countryside, units of our armed forces targeted armed terrorist groups in Bayadir neighborhood in Halasta and killed a number of terrorists and arrested others. A military unit discovered various types of weapons and ammunition in a drainage canal in the orchards of Kabun neighborhood in Damascus.
muscles, which was used as a hideout for terrorists. Another resource said that a mortar launcher, 28 rounds, and 23 RPG shells, in addition to other types of ammunition, were found, found excuse me, in the canal, pointing out that the terrorists used the canal as a weapons warehouse and a base for their terrorist acts in the neighborhood. A military unit also carried out a qualitative operation, killing many terrorists in Al Baladia Square in Barza, Al Balad neighborhood. In Al Raqqa, units of our armed forces carried out operations that resulted in the destruction of four vehicles carrying machine guns. They also killed a number of terrorists in Tel Abyad and its countryside. Security forces inflicted heavy losses upon terrorists in the Limzerib town and its neighboring regions in Dara countryside. A source in the city said that security forces clashed with armed terrorist groups, killing a large number of its members and wounding others. The source added that military uniforms, anti bullet shields, and large quantities of ammunition were seized. Terrorist Khalid Muhammad Al Ghanim, Yusuf Hussein Al Qudsi, Muhammad Awad Al Bardan, Muhammad Khalil Al Hashish, and Wail Isa Al Zubani and Muhammad Ahmad Al Zubani were identified among the dead. In Dara, also one of the most dangerous terrorist group's leaders was killed in a dispute that erupted among members of his group regarding distribution of looted goods and the money they received from abroad. A military source said that units of Syrian Arab Armed Forces assumed full control of Al Amiriya district and most streets of Tal al district in the city of Aleppo. Moving stories about the crimes of the terrorist groups start to come out as citizens they recount the terror they endured. Syrian TV toured the area of Al Amiriya, which is cleared from the terrorists. The entrance of Al Amiriya is calm, the mosque of Al Muhammad and all the area is under full control of the Syrian Arab army. Our forces are positioned taking control of this area of Al Amiriya and parts of Tel Al Zaradir towards Al Ramusi. As you can see touring this area, our heroes have maintained control over all of these areas. We are in Al Amiriya neighborhood. The situation is well, thank God. Thank God, since the army came in, the situation has been well. God be with the army, and God protect them. God be with the army, God protect them. We are in Al Amiriya. We are safe and secure. God protect the soldiers. I am from the area. Thank God. With the presence of army, security and stability returned before we lived in terror. The footage showed that Al Amiriya is under control of the Syrian Arab army, which is moving to Tel Zarazir to clear it from the terrorists. The National Union of Syrian Students branch at Al Baath University yesterday launched a volunteer youth campaign to carry out some rehabilitation works in all the neighborhoods in the city of Homs, which were affected by terrorist groups' crimes. Stressing on the national unity among the Syrian people and to regain the link among their neighborhoods, people went on a rally walking from Anizha Square to Baba Amr Square, participated by the governor of Homs with people from Anizha, Akrima and Wadi Dahab neighborhoods, as they are received by Baba Amr people with hospitality. Life here returned back. Thank God for this. Homs will be an idol in Syria. The enemy wanted it to be destroyed city, so it became a city of life. We are the people of Bab Amr. Welcome here. We are a family in the Syrian home, so we should work together to rebuild our country. We came from Al Nazha, Wadi Dahab, Kerm Al Loz, and Kerm Al Zaytun to our families in Bab Amr. This rally coincided with a volunteering campaign by the National Union of the Syrian Students in order to clean some areas in homes, from Bab Amr Square to Al Insha'at. We just want to show people that everything has returned back to normal in Homs. Homs will stay strong and stubborn through its people and their love to each other. Minister of State for National Reconciliation Affairs Dr. Ali Haider held a meeting with Mukhtar Lamani, the UN bureau chief in Syria, to discuss ways to resolve the crisis in the country. Haider said that military intervention is not a solution to the crisis in Syria and that calls for 
for it seek to prolong the crisis, pointing out that the Syrian government would not mind meeting the special envoy al Ahdar al Ibrahimi with any party in Syria because it is in the framework of the formation of the vision of the real situation in the country. For his part, Lamani said that he met during his visit to Homs with various parties and groups was in the context of efforts to resolve the crisis in Syria. The German newspaper Die Welt quoted security experts in German intelligence as having said that they had an official report about the nationalities and of the fighters in the so-called Free Army. The report asserted that Syrian fighters in this army are not more than 5%. The others belong to fundamental extremist groups from Libya and other African countries. They are supported by Gulf countries which pay for their logistic support. These mercenaries include experts in various fields, such as preparing explosive devices. However, the greatest danger comes from the role of some Arab countries in smuggling extremist terrorists into Syria. Security forces in Bahrain continue their repressive measures against demonstrators calling for reform and social justice. The forces of Al Khalifa have used live bullets and sound bombs to disperse angry demonstrators in a funeral of a young man killed two days ago. The demonstrators called for the resignation of Prime Minister Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and for re real reforms. In the regime, they also denounced the monopoly of authority by the family of Al Khalifa. The ruling family continued to violate the rights of citizens and to receive direct support from the Saudi forces of occupation. Russian army announced its determination to obtain military equipment, including three United launching baths by 2015. The general commander of the land forces, General Vladimir Cherkin, said obtaining heavy, medium and light equipment will take place in addition to the development of models to improve the protection of crews of military vehicles of various kinds. President Hugo Chavez of Venezuela asserted his readiness to join the presidential elections next week. Opinion polls included that Mr. Chavez will defeat the opposition candidate, Hendrique Capires. Mr. Chavez announced during his campaign that he recovered from his sickness and expressed confidence that he would defeat his rival. Chavez asserted the necessity of reducing Venezuela's dependence on oil revenues because this would need more time to put economic activity on track. He also pointed out that his radical measures, like nationalization, had given better results than the economic programs in Europe. And with this, we come to the end of our news. For more information and news, you can visit our website in English, www.serialonline.sy. For now, stay with us. After the break, Vanny has the latest in economy.